Live from Red Bull Gaming Sphere, welcome to Pyjama Party. My name is Marcus Tutsi Tot, and I'll once again be your host today as we we'll welcome you to our extended Christmas show here. We have a packed agenda today and loads to talk about, so let's jump straight into it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Pyjama Party. Now, in tonight's episode, we'll be talking about the year that has passed, the highs, the lows, and what's in store for NIP going into 2024. We can now also as well reveal what's in the mystery box that you saw floating around on social media. It looks absolutely amazing, and more on that later in the show. Now, unfortunately, both of our guests are not feeling too well, and they are, of course, super bummed, but... Health comes first, and with that being said, NIP Esports Director will instead step in and do his best to fill the void of, in the player's shoes. So, without further ado, welcome to the show, Eric Wendel. Eric, welcome to the show, first of all. Thank you. Thank Big you. shoes to fill, both both guests being sick, but fortunately for us, you're here. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I mean, I'm not a CS pro, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm still doing good at least. That's something. <laughs> good enough, I guess. Yeah. So obviously, uh, for someone who really embodies esports, uh, what has your journey been heading into what is now an esports director in NIP? And first of all, what does an esports director even do? Yeah, well, you know, where do I begin with all that? <laughs> it's a long story, but keeping it fairly short, um, I've you know, been a gamer my whole life, mm. uh, doing sports, doing games, and of course, all that stuff. Studied something completely different, worked in marketing, yada, yada. Okay. And then one day, you know, what, seven years ago or something, I was like, ah, can I work in esports? Is that possible? <laughs> I, I guess so. And then I actually took the long and, and weird ro route being that I went to uh, ESL in Germany. So I moved to Germany, I worked there, worked my way up that company. And that's where I got some contacts with an NIP. And mm -hmm. then they asked me to, to start NIP. And that soon, two and a half years ago. It's like fall 21. And then with the changes that happened the past months, I then got a chance to now take over as the director of esports or esports director and being responsible of the staff and the players uh, in our teams in Europe and, and Brazil. Okay. What was your initial job when you moved into NFP for the first time? Director what was your of position? team operations. So basically this, you know, right hand guy that solves all the operational tasks okay. around the teams okay. and having some responsibility over the team managers and, and so on. Okay. So and, and esports director, what, what's your what's your day to day job now? I guess <laughs> also it, a, yeah. a big one. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's changed a lot, right? I mean, there's there's a lot of things to do, a lot of work to be done. Mm. Uh, I think if we look back, I took this job now back in August, right? Yeah. So there's been a lot of uh, trying to really get it uh, changed from the foundation of uh, how we do things in, in teams and also in the staff, uh, structure and organization and, okay. and cultural changes. So that's been the main focus. And that you know means a lot of talks and a lot of uh, interviews with players, yeah. which Bjorn Threat has done a lot as well. Um, it's so hard to pinpoint what I do in a day. You know, mm. when my girlfriend asked me, like, what did you do today? It's like, I, I don't know. Yeah, I was supposed to do this thing, but then I did these things, and I, I, I don't know, right? Um, but yeah, so in, if you boil it down to one thing, it is to make sure that everyone around the team, staff, and the team, the teams themselves, and the players, 
are uh, able to do their best job, right? Okay. That's kind of okay. way I see myself. I'm not the expert. I have people like Threat who are, you know, very technical. People mm. like Trolls Robble, who's uh, the performance guy, and a bunch of other skilled people. And I make sure that they have everything they need, so they can operate within a frame that I'm trying to, to set for them, right? Okay. That's kind of how I see my my position. I mean, you spoke a bit about you just came into the job as well. Obviously, uh, what'd you say, August, b filling yep. big shoes. So instantly, once you got into this position, uh, I mean, talk about jumping into the deep end with the job. <laughs> Big decisions, major changes. You, sp you speak a lot about structure within the, not only the teams, I guess, but also within the organization yeah. as well. Some of them were popular, like I said, some not so much. How is that, what's that experience like going into it this early? You haven't been there for that long. Mm -hmm. And then all the changes you've had to make, what's that experience like? Yeah, I think it's been pretty fine with me, actually. Uh, the reason is that to me, it was very important. Well, to begin with, I'm taking over the esports department, right? Yeah. So there's still other departments at NIP. There's commercial, there's creative, and so on. So I'm not at all steering the whole ship, but the esports department and all the staff around there mm. uh, and the teams. Um, and immediately, you know, just a few weeks in, I realized I need Bjorn on board, right? So Bjorn came aboard okay. as a GM of CS, making sure that someone who really knows CS that is daily running the teams together with the coaches and all the staff around. Um, and, uh, and, and immediately, me and Bjorn were pretty calm in the sense of we can't do anything about the past like we literally can't yeah. change anything but we do have a really nice opportunity now to do it the way we want it right um, and with having that kind of mindset and that calm it hasn't been that stressful okay like i think if we would have been thinking too much about what the fans would think hmm. or what changes we did six months ago 12 months ago 24 months ago then it would be more stressful i think then it's like can we really remove this player can we really do that okay. thing because you know what, what is the history what well, we kind of had to delete what's been happening uh, I understand it's a thing for the fans and everyone following NIP yeah. and for me as well as an NIP fan from the start. But in our job, we had to look at, all right, August 23, um, 2023, what do we do from here now? Yeah. What, what it, can we work with? But is that not annoying? You basically having to have the luggage of what else has been going on in the past, then you get what should be a clean slate. But you have yeah. all this going on in the back that you now have to take yeah. responsibility for in some sense, I guess. Is, I, that not, is that not quite annoying? I mean, it's, I think it's really fun and cool, right? I mean, to begin with, I, if you really boil it down, I'm just a NIP fan from the start, yeah. like <laughs> as a kid, yeah. now getting to have this job, right? It's, it's really, it's amazing. I'm, I'm, mm. so, I'm, I'm passionate and I love this, right? So that's really fun. But what can be annoying is, because it's, 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 it's tricky out there and on Twitter, for example, you know, <laughs> yeah. people, yeah. of course, they see NIP as this long timeline of everything that happened in the past 10 years or 20 years, right? And that's the way they will see it. Most people don't know who I am. Most people don't know the changes that happened, mm. which is fine, because, you know, it's better that they know who our teams and players are. You know, I don't need to be in the, in the spotlight in that sense. But when they don't know that, they might think that it's still the same management at NIP or it's still the same persons making the decisions or whatever it could be. Mm. And that's something we do see a lot. I mean, b both Bjorn and I look on Twitter, looking at comments on HLTV, whatever. It can be tricky, right? Because most people are like, oh, NIP, I've been <laughs> doing this for the past years. Like, oh, we're trying to do something new here. Yeah. But the only way you can uh, you know, prove them and make sure that they get attention that you're around is to make sure that stuff is happening, right? Yep. And you're playing better and the team is feeling better and changes are happening. I know you speak a lot about, like we said, changing culture. So what the decisions you're now making, b either hard ones, tough ones, easy ones. What are you trying to, to accomplish with this? Because I know you speak a lot about that culture having to change and just having, I guess, having fun at work and just the organization feeling well. What, what's the goal here? What are you trying to accomplish with these changes? Yeah. Um, I think it's firstly important to, for me is to separate my job. I have some staff responsibility, yeah. people that are, you know, employed for NIP doing certain more at the performance yeah. uh, side of things, like Bjorn or Trolls maybe, and some people more actually being a normal employee at a normal company in that sense, right? Mm -hmm. That's a bit different because, of course, you have to, like, culture is the same across it, but for the performance people, and the players included, they are used to more of a, if you're not performing, you're out. Okay. That's just the world okay. of sports, right? So that's a bit different, uh, uh, kind of the approach to it, right? But, but all in all, uh, and, you know, the goal I'm trying to achieve, we really want to nail the basics before we get more into the details. Mm. We really want to nail the way we, again, treat each other, the same work ethic, uh, I'm saying structure and organization a lot. It sounds boring, it is pretty boring, but when you nail that stuff, Again, you build this frame, right? I'm yeah, trying I guess to build this frame, work, right? yeah, yeah, the yeah. groundwork, yeah. the frame, and then you can have people bouncing around inside of that frame, yep. but then you know at least that they won't go off too far and they won't be too far away from each other. So I'm trying to set that so that all these people really can make sure that they can work as, as, as effective as possible on okay. what they're good at. If that's a coach, if that's a player, if that's Bjorn or whatever it could be, I really want them to, to be efficient and have a good kind of 
way of working. Okay. Uh, and and it, the bottom line, if we have a culture where people are working hard and having a good time while mm -hmm. doing it, then we're pretty far. Like then we're getting then, then we're getting somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. I mean, exciting times ahead, times ahead. And speaking of exciting times, make sure you keep the questions coming for your favorite segment later today, the Q and A. So please keep that coming. And obviously, who doesn't want to win the amazing Christmas box that you've seen floating around as well? As we're now going to head into some of the highlights for NIP during 2023. I mean, obviously, the focus, Eric, is always going to be about the, the the CS2 team. I mean, NIP and CS go hand to hand, but it's been quite the eventful year for NIP in terms of anything else alongside of the CS2. A lot of movements in that team, obviously, the main team. You're revamping your ninjas. We're going to head into a bit of that as well. You have a new format going into FC24. We spoke a bit about with Olelito uh, yep. with that one in the last episode. And there, just, <coughs> just a lot going on. And obviously, fans associate NIP with CS. But obviously, you're also competing in so much more. Speaking of that, we do actually have a message from your Brazilian Rainbow oh. Six team as well. Right. So take a look. Fala galera que tem na Pijama Party, Cycle aqui, é, queria dar um recap um pouco do que foi o nosso ano, foi um ano bem legal pra gente, a gente conseguiu se reestruturar bem, conseguiu ir para todos os campeonatos possíveis, é, conseguir boas colocações, é, foi muito prazeroso pra, tanto para mim quanto para o time todo fazer parte dessa família da NIP agora, é, a gente conseguiu contornar uma situação que a gente teve um ano difícil do ano passado, e com muita resiliência, muito foco, acabou dando tudo certo. E queria agradecer a todos vocês pelo, por sempre torcer pra gente. Estou ansioso pra caramba para poder ter a oportunidade de ir Europa de novo, poder estar presente com vocês. E é isso. Agora pro Invitation, a gente tem essa, essa cabeça de que, tipo assim, realmente se você é da NIP, você é um dos favoritos, você tem que ser um dos favoritos, não adianta você ir pro Invitation e estar tá comemorando a sua classificação. Era o nosso objetivo, a primeira, o nosso pelo grande. Nosso primeiro grande objetivo era a classificação, o que nós conseguimos. Agora o que a gente quer é ganhar, é botar a NIP no topo de novo, voltar a ganhar tudo, seu time altamente competitivo. E, e tipo, esse, esse, esse passado da NIP de ficar em parte de parte da tabela, isso nunca mais existiu. Acho que a gente está no caminho certo. Né? Então a gente está vindo bem, a gente está bem forte, a gente está sendo muito forte. Então, tipo assim, a torcida pode esperar grandes coisas a gente sim. E a gente está vindo para buscar título. 2024 é grandeza de novo, não tem essa de flertar com a parte de baixo da tabela mais não. É isso, agradeço todo mundo o carinho, a torcida e a paciência, tá? 2024 é tudo nosso, é isso. Um beijo e gol de... Well, thank you so much for that, the Brazilian Rainbow Six team. When you see the guys talking about the invitation coming up in February next year, what are your thoughts on that? How closely associated or connected are you to that, to the Rainbow Six team as well? I, I love those guys. I think, guys, I think it's uh, important to also remember, right, that for me, again, as you say, the CS2 main team is the flagship team of in course, one sense, of right? Course. But to me, there's a lot of different teams. There's, mm. for example, Rainbow Six and also the Rocket League team down in Brazil. Uh, wonderful people, really amazing people working around that mm. team as well. Bob, uh, both Bob and, and Bernardo, kind of the guys running it down in Brazil. Um, really amazing people. And the Six Invitational is actually huge. So, um, you know, it's, it's easy to think again about the CS2 team in Sweden, but down in Brazil, yeah. we have these guys who win in, I think, that three, four years ago, but they've been in the second place in the Six Invitational, then the first place in Six Invitational, being kind of yeah. the big, the worlds in league or like one major if that was a thing in CS, right? Mm. So it's a huge thing. And they are, you know, they are, those guys, especially like Psycho, uh, a good example of someone who's a legend in the game in Brazil, right? So now Six Invitational, it's coming to Sao Paulo. That's where we have the <laughs> team. It's home turf. It's NIP's time to really have like one kind of, not a last dance in that sense, but it's time to really show that they are still not too old to do yeah. this thing, right? Yeah. They can still make it, they can still fight for the title. Uh, so yeah, great people. Is it a danger? Because like you said, the CS2 is the flagship. It, it, flagship. It's always going to be because it's NIP and Counter-Strike, I guess. Is there a danger or is there a worry from you guys that you put, maybe not you personally, but the organization as well puts too much time and effort and into the CS team? Or do you, do you feel like that's kind of... Because that has to be a tough one. Because yeah, I guess 100%. all the attention is, is always going to be mainly on the CS team. 100%. I think, uh, you know, it's two things. You have the people work with the marketing and social and so yeah. on. That is a challenge, right? That we don't get too focused on, yeah. on the CS team. Also from our side then, because a lot of the information that they get is of course feeded from the esports department. Of course, yeah. So if we are then very CS focused, yeah. well then they will focus on CS. Mm. So that is a that is a challenge that, yeah. and that just because 
sure, it's, it's a lot of history and legacy in the CS side, but we want NIP to be, you know, there's more to it. Yeah, there's global, course. there's fans in other games who want to reach them as well, right? And that is something that we need to, to, to battle as, uh, for sure. Okay, so uh, going from Brazil back to Sweden and your esports efforts here in home turf, uh, we're, we're, we're going back to the conversation. I know you're sick and tired of hearing uh, of it, but Swedish CS, Swedish CS future. Uh, one major thing that recently took place was kind of like a, I don't know, it sounded like a secret meeting almost that took, <laughs> uh, took place at Space just a couple of weeks ago regarding, I mean, it wasn't only you, it was the top teams in, uh, in Sweden, I guess, how to push the, the grassroots forward, I guess. Can you just talk a bit about what that meeting, how it came to place, and especially what were you actually talking about in the meeting? Because there's so many, so many rumors going on. Yeah, what, yeah. what actually happened? How did that even start? How did that meeting take place? We should probably have recorded that meeting. Yeah, I mean, that would you be, should. It makes sense now when you say it. But, but anyway, um, there, was, there were teams, the top teams in Sweden, and also like some organizers, uh, some other you know, people working around the esports in Sweden, okay. right? some stake, core stakeholders. Okay. Um, and uh, it actually came from when, when Bjorn joined, we were sitting down and thinking what well, we want to do this fall with the team and with NIP. Yeah. And then, then we were also, of course, being Swedes, both of us, focusing on how do we make sure that we get NIP back to feeling Swedish in that sense, yeah. and how do we close that gap that's been created between the f Swedish fan base and NIP? Because there's no reason for that. And you know, Bjorn and I would love that to not be, right? Mm. Again, we're two Swedes. So we actually had this idea then, like, let's gather everyone. Uh, we didn't have space on Svenska Kuppendex's exact uh, first idea, but we were like, let's gather everyone this fall sometime. And then as time went on, mm. uh, we talked to Anton Fager uh, yep. during a, a guy who's doing a lot of stuff in Sweden, mm. in CS. Uh, and he heard about our idea, and then he coordinated with space and, and you know, fixed the invite and, and everything okay. around it. So but this they, meeting, they, they just, just interpret, this meeting was actually your idea heading into, because you wanted a conversation with yes, other top yeah. teams in Sweden. Okay, which is, okay, is funny, because we, were, we really made a mistake of not, you know, we could have been NIP invited to it, but for some reason we kind of, they did it instead, like yeah. uh, Anton and Space, which they did great. I'm a th thankful for that. They did yeah. the coordination of it, right? But we probably should have been clear that we actually had a part of it because I saw some comments being like, oh, NIP, why are they even? They really yeah. care about <laughs> Sweden. We're like, exactly. we, we came up with the idea. <laughs> yeah. but, all right, you know, whatever. There, this is our a, meeting, it's man. It's an uphill sometimes. <laughs> but then the meeting itself was not at all. And I think that's the good part that it was coordinated or organized by Space that it wasn't supposed to be an NIP show or anything. It okay. was supposed to be everyone has their issues and their challenges. And it, wasn't, it was about grassroots for sure, but it was more about Swedish CS, where are we now? What can we do? What are the challenges? And for me personally, the biggest issue why I wanted this meeting is that I see so much in Sweden that we're kind of pointing at each other and be like, oh, you're doing this thing yes. and you guys aren't doing enough on this side. And instead, I just want all the Swedish you know, stakeholders to see us to come together and you know, make sure that we get better as a group, right? Because that's what's needed. That's, how you, that's how you uh, get the real success. But in terms of just how do you, coming together, it sounds good. It's everyone wants it. Everyone wants you guys included, probably most of all, wants Swedish CS to, to grow. Because like I said, if, if you guys get bigger or if some, someone else gets bigger, everyone kind of accomplishes yep. something out of that. What does that look like, though? Because I know, was there any concrete, like, okay, this is what we want to accomplish uh, by Q3 of 2024. This is when we yeah, want to do... Yeah, that meeting. Yeah, exactly. It was, like, it, was what honestly, actually... it was honestly too short for that. It was like, th most of these people have never been in the same room. Like, yeah. we're all in the industry, but don't really talk in that way. So those two hours were a lot of ventilating. You know, okay. and half of that, I would say, was about NIP in different ways. Of course, not much that Bjorn and I had been involved in, but just mm. NIP historically or what we have or haven't done. And then what I liked was that half the room kind of feel after a while that maybe we should focus on Sweden. Because okay. again, I think this is important as well for the success of Sweden, that NIP isn't Swedish eSport. Yeah. You know, we would, would love to be the flagship uh, out there in the global stages. That's what we're doing so far. We want to keep doing that, but we can't be Oh, everything in Swedish esports because everyone in this room will have a different role. There will be people that are great with the talents, people yeah. that are great in the schools, people that are great on the biggest stages, you know, and, and so on. And that's what we need to be better at using these strengths and weaknesses that we have and be better as a group, as a, as a nation in that sense. Does it get annoying you guys get all the flack for not being the ones to kind of drag everyone else along? Is, is that not something you, you think about? Because I think that's one of the, the views of it as well. Why is, every, why is all the responsibility on you? I know you're the, yeah, yeah. I know you're the biggest, you're all is going to be the big brother, but do you feel like there could be more help coming out from the outside, or is it annoying you guys having to do all the... No, I wouldn't say at all that we're doing the heavy lifting anyway, but I, I think, uh, of course, we're getting the, the, the critique a of lot course, towards us, yeah. right? And, and that's fine, again, because both Bjorn and I, in that way, are very pragmatic, being like, we just came here. It's not really about us as people. It's yeah, about yeah, NIP yeah. in that sense, right? And that's also the reason we're trying to do some of these things. We're trying to be out there more, in more interviews, more podcasts, to also feel that... Yep. 
Because it's so easy to be like, I hate NIP as an entity or whatever it could be, yeah. or, or Manchester United or whatever. Right? It's easy to hate a, a certain name, but it's hard when you see a face to it. And the it's biggest like, oh, it's name are always going to get the biggest hate, I guess. Like, yeah. that, it's, it's always going to be exactly. like that. Is that why you think you're doing like maybe more podcasts, being more transparent? I know is a word you use a lot. Yeah. You guys want to be more transparent and kind of put a face on not only 100%. the players there, but also like the organization of NIP as a whole. You guys want to... Maybe do a bit, bit more, I don't know if explaining is the correct word, but kind of just being out there. Trying to, I, I, one way, not to sound like I'm talking down to anyone, but trying to educate a bit, right? Not that like you guys don't know enough, but it is yeah. really hard for a fan to follow along because it's kind of closed doors yeah. a lot of times. Sometimes it has to be for, you know, the, the, the privacy of people and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but we would like to open that door a bit more and educate people on like, this is how we do things. This is why we do those things. We would love to do it that way. You mentioned over there, but we can't because of X, Y, Z. Okay. We're trying to really educate people and get them along on this train and we would love people to also feel you know nip fans not only in sweden of course to feel that oh nip i know what they do and why they do it you don't need to accept everything or like it but mm. at least you you understood yeah. it and you got an explanation for it that's something i feel like you owe a fan in that sense 100 percent agree now speaking of progress which is obviously what that is another thing that also took place actually this weekend <laughs> here at a red bull gaming sphere at an infernal line uh was actually the um Wonderland. We plan to discuss yep. it with Gen Con, obviously, but we actually got, instead of that, a short clip from the event this weekend and what it looked like. I think it's been very fun and for me it's very new because in the Netherlands we don't have stuff like this, where it's like Wonderland and women can come, you know. So it's very nice and here in Stockholm and with Red Bull it's, it's really nice that it exists. I would have loved an event like this when I was a kid because it's, it's a safe place, you know. I mean, I think we're going to, into the right direction, but there could be way more events like this, like more female gaming events and I also think we need more female hubs and female leagues for the scene to grow. Like of course the more leagues and hubs the more women will think like oh there's hubs for us, there's leagues for us so they will start playing you know. I mean yeah it could always be more you know like this is the first time I've been to this kind of event and that I actually knew about it so of course it could be way more and also my country and of course other countries so. Yeah, it's good to be so like really cute on the <laughs> Yeah, exactly. As Noma oh, and Jenica <laughs> mentioned, there's a lot to be done within the female scene. We spoke a bit about it. I know how much you guys care about it, NIP and an organization as a whole. How do you plan to build further on that? Can you something? Can you guys do anything else, or is it just about trying to grow the female scene as a whole? Because I guess again, everyone has to come together for that scene to grow as well. Yeah, uh, that scene is uh, is uh, uh, very interesting. I mean, it, that's one of my passion projects in yeah. that sense, right? Uh, we had the impact heat now since uh, I think one and a half year ish, mm. something like that. Um, we learned a lot along that road. We also had, just to stay on the female gaming in general, we also had a Valorant Game Changer team, which is the Valorant female team. Okay. Right? We had okay. that, like, I think we had to stop work with them in June, something. Uh, so we had them for like almost a year, I think. And, and we, tr we tried uh, around a lot, right? But uh, it's a big passion project. We really want this to be a thing. What bottom line of what the goal is for us with the Impact team or having a women's team is to close the gap between male and female yeah. CS in that sense, yeah. right? Um, that is really something we would, would love to be the first team that slot a female player up to the main team. Ooh. And that that's just like, a, it works out, right? That's not something we do tomorrow. That's like of a long-term goal, right? But that would be really cool to do. And because we, we truly believe that there's no reason why uh, guys and girls couldn't play together. There is the only reason is, in our world at least, that the guy has had you know, what is it, 15, 20 more years of resources and time to play games, like a lot of mm. guys. And now we're getting more girls into playing, but you need that pool of girls playing, being really large, to start getting some really good talent. The more players playing, the better the, the best talents are, right? 100% agree. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, fun times ahead. And speaking of fun times, the mystery box has now been re re revealed. And we will, by the end of the show, get to the competition going, where one lucky winner will get the chance to get to unbox a Nintendo Switch. Yeah, you heard that correctly. A Nintendo Switch, a Red Bull Christmas Red Bull Christmas Edition drink, a signed Razer mouse pad, an NIP t-shirt, and Razer keycaps. And we'll, we're about to do a, a kind of a deep dive into the C's main team as well, but in the spirit of Christmas, let's take a look at a really sweet, sweet segment. So my candy is Toffifi. Can I pass it around or do you want to yeah. be the one that... Uh, I pass it. You pass it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Three, okay. two, yes. one. Mm. I had enough mm. of this. Mm. 
Is it to your liking? That was actually good. I laid the caramel texture. Okay, so let's get the ratings going. Dania, what's your rating? One to five. Okay, I go with four, just mm -hmm. because this is so good, but it's not that for Christmas. But the taste, it's so delicious. I think, uh, honestly, it uh, kind of throws me back to uh, my grandma. She always had these out yeah. in like a little bowl. Yeah, same. I'll give it a four as well, mm. uh, based on texture, yeah. mouth feeling, yes. <laughs> uh, taste buds. Yes. I'm a little bit watery in my mouth yeah, right now because it it's, so, yes. it's so special. I mean, I'll give it a four, just mm -hmm. based on it being good candy. Okay. I would otherwise give it a five, I think, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it's that Christmassy. Okay. I can let that one slide. It's okay. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> I think I will say four, two. Please. All right. It's Really good, it's fine to be honest, but it's not that good. So this is basically a uh, chocolate from Alicante. It's chocolate with milk and a little bit of almonds. Okay. Okay, guys, you can test it. Yeah, no, definitely. Good texture, good consistency, <laughs> good flavor. Milk chocolate is not, it's not a five for me. It's okay. a four. <laughs> okay. It's a bit too nutty for me. I can deal with that. It's a four for me. I'm leaning to a 4.5, but yeah. the chocolate was amazing. Good really? chocolate. Really? Great, yes, great Thank consistency. You. Nice. It was really good. I mean, uh, sorry to disappoint, but I can't go higher than Petman, but I'll give you a 3.9. 3.9? That's <laughs> not... Oh, you'll get a 4. Oh, you'll nice. get a 4. <laughs> okay. I really like when in chocolate, chocolate contains uh, nuts, because I think it's adding extra flavor, and I'll just give it a strong 4. Okay, so I bought these special balls, they're very, very like a, it's a different taste, and I want the boys here to to taste my Christmas. I don't want to disappoint you. I'm not the biggest marshmallow fan, and they were very sweet and sugary. But I'll give it a three. A three. That's all. Okay. It's fine. Like they're okay. I would say this is the most Christmassy thing we've had so far. So uh, just for that, I'll give you a bonus point. I'll pump you up to a 4.5. That's perfect. Damn. Yes. I like the flavor. Mm -hmm. My mouth was pretty good. So I will give you a 4. I like the taste. And if you mix it with some hot drinks, I think it's strong 4.5 for me. Okay, so I have some Christmas sweets here. Uh, it's like fondant, you know, like with chocolate. So you know what I'm taking? Oh, oh my God. Oh. It's white. Oh. And give, give it a try now. Mm. Oh my god, it's, it's like 10 spoons of sugar mm. in my mouth. Yes. No, I'll take one as well. It's very tasty. Yeah. <laughs> but then again, I think it's, I it. it's kind of too much sugar yeah. for me. Yeah. It's very sweet. Yeah. But I like it a lot, but it's, it's a four for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is a lot of sugar, yeah. I will say too. Yeah. But I like the sugar, so I will give you a 4.5. Mm. Yeah, but I'll one. give you a four, boss. As well. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a two. <laughs> oh, bro! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so I can sugar. try another one. Let me yeah. just try a fast one. The white one. The, no, a pink one, bro. Nah, it's the same shit, boss. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. This is good. Hey, 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 hey. This is fucking Calm good. down, boss man. Mm. I brought some burnt elements uh, with some, I guess, some sugar stuff. Uh, we usually have them uh, like in stands around Denmark, and it smells very Christmassy, and we have it each Christmas, so... Run for the boys. I took three. You took three? Yeah. I one as well. Five! I'll give you a five. I have the same in Spain, and it's really awesome. That's a five? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yes, it's a five for me. Dania? That's a five for me as well. Really? Full five? Yeah, right, let's go! <laughs> we have That's a winner! Let's go. go, bro. tag with the win. You can now actually, by the way, enter a competition and win some of the candy you just saw, uh, the Christmas candy. You can find out more about that on the NIP Twitter page. So make sure you go there, do that. Now, Eric, uh, to uh, jump into a bit on ter in terms of the CS team, what's going on behind the scenes especially, uh, 
we spoke a bit about it, challenges during this year. What has the player's experience been throughout this year, do you think, with so much going on both on and off the servers? What do you feel? How do you feel the players have reacted to what, what's been going on? For the main team, for the whole of this year? Yeah, for the main oh, team. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, a, it's a long story, <laughs> right? It's, a, it's so much to, to, to boil that up. I mean, looking back in the very start of it, you have you start a season with, I think, a blast uh, spring groups. Yeah. You have Hampus not feeling well, just a few matches in. You get Maxter flying over, which I think was really cool to begin with, looking at where Maxter is today. Uh, that was his kind of first appearance, I think, in the main team. And then now we'll see what he's been doing. Mm. Then we got Config in, you know, that whole thing happened. Hampus back, Alexia out. There's a whole spring there, right? Which is kind of blurry, to be honest. Uh, because then again, in, in uh, August, that's that's when I and me and Bjorn took over, right? So that's kind of more where the focus yeah. is. Um, but yeah, and then I, I think I touched on it before. Then it's been a lot about kind of rebuilding and re doing it from the start. Uh, also important thing that I haven't mentioned that it was really important for us to make sure that Hampus and, and uh, Ludde or, or Broland felt yeah. like if there was a it, it made sense to them right and it was well communicated and transparent again that's a, it's really important I do feel that you know hand on my heart if you talk to them they'd be like of course they would like to stay but they really understood it and they were fine with the decision and respected the decision right yeah. which I think is important as well do you think maybe there's a shot of the players now on the team maybe get influenced by all the talk going around it because they really have nothing to do with it. They're just trying to play some CS CS2 and win a couple of games. Do you think there's a possibility of that going into the team and kind of affecting their... Because they look happier than ever. They mm -hmm. really do. Do you think that ever has a shot of going into the actual team and discussions? Uh, it, it has to because like I've been around for this kind of uh, exposure for a short time, just a few months, and not even the same as the players at all, right? And I can be annoyed or it can reach me of sometimes, course. right? Because it's just not logical, most of the things. <laughs> so I think for sure it could be, but also they're, they're very used to this in that sense. And then also they've been super professional these past weeks, months, with just uh, handling the whole situation. I mean, also including uh, uh, Brolin and Hampus from that start. Basically what Bjorn said when he came in was like, hey guys, changes will happen. They will take time. I'll keep you updated. And imagine that thing to begin with. They, they practice without knowing who's leaving the team. Mm. That may, might sound like, oh, that wasn't optimal, but what do you do instead? Well, are you supposed to not have them practice? <laughs> so no, they're, they're really professional. They've really been doing great and we're trying to be fair the whole way through. Um, so I think it's, sure, it's an effect of them, but they've been handling it really well the whole uh, fall. Would you agree with me if I said the team, the spirit of the team right now is better than it has been for a long time? Because, like I said, they look happy. Yeah, and I, I guess mean, that's I, I can at least say that I've been here for two and a half years now, not with this responsibility, but I've seen it from the inside. This is the best uh, work ethic and, and kind of joint culture or, and positive culture that I've, that I've seen in the main team since I got here. Are you positive about the future of the, this current lineup? 100%. 100%. Okay. Can't wait for the RMR to start this mm -hmm. uh, spring. Does it ever annoy you personally, like just going away from the team? Does it ever annoy you or does it get frustrating he hearing all the the so-called experts and the insights or just social media about all the talk of apparently what's happening when they have no idea what's going on behind the scenes or what the decisions actually come from? Does that ever get to you personally? Because I know I'd be... I, I think I frustrated. only get annoyed when I'm I'm fine with popul, popul, people having to make up stuff and you know talent yeah. on shows they have to like get some time and, and talk about <laughs> something right and also of course they will be tainted by the past and they will talk about how it's been at NIP yep. the past X years yep. the only thing I'm annoyed with is when we actually put something out there we do explain something it could be an HLTV article article or whatever and then still someone is standing on a big show and saying something completely different mm. from what we actually already communicated and then you're like oh okay because they have so much power when you're out there right yep. you're really talking on a live show like a blast resell, you have a lot of power of the narrative. So that can be annoying, but it's, I, I'm usually trying to actually write to these people then like talents okay. and, and just like politely being like, actually, we explain this here and trying again to educate, right? Mm. I, I'm really, both Bjorn and I are really trying to uh, meet everyone with a lot of love and, and uh, patience. Yep. Speaking of something positive, um, Alex uh, stepping in as a new IGL, probably the kindest and <laughs> funniest guy I've oh ever yeah, met. I actually, I absolutely love the guy. Yeah. What do you feel is the biggest difference with him stepping in? Because I guess, obviously, in terms of calling on the surveys, it's a hard one. But he just looks like a bright spot in the team. It looks like he's loved by everyone. <laughs> yeah, I think him and if we if we compare it to the old IGL, with the, which would then be Hampus. Yeah, I think it's a big difference in in the type of IGL, right? Hampus is this insane, talented, raw, oh yeah. skilled person, which himself can make a lot of plays. Alex has a really interesting background of uh, having to play with uh, 
you know, not the top players of the world in, mov in movie stars yeah. for seven years. Also having a bit of a sporting background and being a real leader in that sense of like the old classic sport leadership. And that's something that's been really interesting. Also, a really cool thing with Alex is that he's been working with some pious, which is pretty good right now, and also Martinez, which left movie star uh, and also are, w are doing good. So he's really good at getting young and talented operas up to the next level and push them to to be even better. Was that a bit uh, with the dis decision as well with bringing him in? It might not be better or worse. It's just different, I guess, because I guess you want to exactly. shake things up. Exactly. You go for something else. You try yeah. something else out, right? Yep. And also, again, if the culture is the core thing, then you want someone who's really strong with that kind of culture mm. off the server as well, right? Okay. Uh, heading into 2024, what are your goals? What do, what do you want to achieve? Because I guess it's less about actual like placements. Oh, we want to be top three, whatever. I guess it's just... Like you talked about earlier, kind of the groundwork, I guess. Yeah. I guess that's a goal. What are your goals heading into 2024? That's a good question. Uh, you know, there's a lot of teams as well. Yeah. Uh, but if we just do some quick highlights, we've got the Rainbow Six guys. Mm -hmm. Again, Six Invitational in Sao Paulo in, I think, February something. That's going to be amazing. I hope that it's going to be a great show. Um, we have uh, Ule, who's uh, Ule Lito, who's yeah. in a great form. I think yeah. he's going to have a great year with a kind of new FC24. Um, and then, of course, looking at CS, I would love uh, just waiting for this whole... We want this uh, kind of CS division to be done and dusted, right? Mm. We have the main team, we have the Young Ninjas, the Impact team. Might also be something else going on there. We have might be a fourth team on the horizon of, of CS. We have a couple of fan questions regarding yeah, yeah. that, so, so that might uh, be get ready. So you know, that's really looking forward to when that is all nailed and signed and done, and we can get that really cool kind of ecosystem internally, right, of being able to move players between these teams and educate everyone in the NIP CS, and also to, to figure out what is NIP CS, right, and how do we make sure that works in 24. Okay, so speaking of fan questions, we're actually heading straight into it. We've got a ton both on social media and in chat, and we picked out your favorite one. So let's do it. Let head, let's head into your favorite segment, the Q&A. Uh, I'm just... I'm just going to keep this one simple. I'm going to go from easy to harder, okay? Oh, okay? Wow. Favorite CSGO player excluding the NIP roster. Oh, no one from NIP. We're not going to keep and it that, that simple. No one has been in NIP either. Th yeah, think, uh, the current. Okay, let's, let's, let's current. Just, well, I'll, I'll exclude NIP just for the sake of it. I mean, as an NIP fan, it would be some old school NIP player, right? Of course. I'll current exclude that. player not on the current Twists. roster. Okay. So the twist with the sets. Oh, okay, end, okay. Right? okay. The okay, um, okay. Great individual. Um, as a Spanish fan, I would love to see NIP do more stuff for his for Alex's home country. Uh, looking forward to that. I guess I guess with Alex coming in, the Spanish community. I mean, they're pretty awesome. Yeah, they are awesome <laughs> for sure. We should do more there. We should be there more, and we should also include them in more stuff. Yeah, hundred percent agree. Best memory with NIP. Uh, wow, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. <laughs> oh, and we have we shouldn't go on for too long here, right? Um, when you oh. think of like, oh, that was amazing. That trip, that tournament, that result. What do you think of? Honestly, I think, I think uh, these past uh, months in, in like mm. maybe Friday, for example, right? Being kind of we kind of closed the year uh, down or the fall down. All the people worked so hard, and then feeling like, all right, we really worked hard until the end. Now let's go with 24. I okay. think th that could be the thing. Just that feeling of that we're moving forward. Uh, speaking about talents, by the way, who do you think is the most exciting young talent we have in Sweden right now? Also tough questions. I know that we have a ton. Does anyone stick yeah. out? Uh, I think the, the, the quick one, top of mind, is Max, right? Yeah. It, it's a lot of things you see on the server, but also watching him outside of the server and listening to the staff around him, he's doing everything right. He's really trying to you know take care of his body yeah. and sleep and food and practice he, he's a uh, yeah yeah he seems super professional because he's very he's incredibly young but he seems extremely dedicated and super professional very. i guess that's why you kept him and also used him and and i, th I think it's a cool example because he's not the, the guy that from the first young Nina's when he was in it was like exactly. the, the, the big star yep. but he's been grinding right he's been doing the right yep. decisions all the way and suddenly he is the, the big star hard work beats talent yeah yeah uh favorite country to visit uh, do, 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 uh oh, wow, I have no <laughs> yeah, idea. Also Ger tough one. Germany. <laughs> But it's all because I live in Germany. I feel like I have a... Okay, it's a pretty boring country, honestly. But it's like <laughs> I have a lot of good memories there. And good Sorry, friends. Germans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Germany? Yeah, I okay. guess so. What would I like that answer, answer, though. Okay, so I said from easy to <laughs> to harder. Who wins in a one versus one between you and threat? Me. <laughs> really? Next. Yeah, no, okay. no, okay, no. <laughs> I'm, honestly, I'm, you know, I'm, I've, I played FPS my whole life, but uh, he played CS only. I think if we t took like one of ones in five different uh, FPS games, mm -hmm. Then maybe I'll uh, you know have a chance. Okay. Yeah. Uh, from Lingon in chat, Lingon says go. Uh, thoughts on missing out on Katu? 
Uh, yeah, that's uh, it's a tough one. Yeah. Honestly, also we just got the news. Uh, we thought we were finished. We yeah. had a chance. If someone drops out, visa issues. We're trying to figure out what to do with that one. A uh, good thing with that, we get way more prac time for the RMRs, which is uh, okay. the, the big one, right? The major. Cool. Uh, we touched a bit about it. Uh, young ninjas. What's going on? <laughs> That's uh, just a question. Yeah, what's yeah, happening? What's going on? <laughs> we're just about to sign the final players. Okay. Uh, it's going to be an international roster. The idea is that you have an academy team that is supposed to kind of mirror the main team. Okay. So you play, you have the same map veto, the same call outs, as much as, much, much as possible is the same. So you can slot people in and out if you need them, right? So it's one of those, like, we, we spoke a bit about it before the show, like, if, if comparing it to football, I guess. You want the same structure and the same kind of system in the main team as yeah. you do in the, as a, I don't know, under 18 exactly. players. So you can kind of exactly. switch out so you can if switch that's needed. And, uh, I mean, okay. we, if anyone, we've seen people can be out sick, right? And then mm. you want to have a solution for that. Okay. Okay. And not having to go for an external player all the time, so that is the that is the idea. And of course, to also grow the talent to make sure that yep. they get to the next level. But international roster in Young Ninjas. It's natural roster. Yep. There might be well, there are some sweets already. People know about Max or Silence and yep. so on. So there will be sweets in there, but it's not going to be promised that it's always no. sweets or anything like that. Chance of an academy team? Uh, yeah, I mean we are we teased this in a podcast actually yeah. a week ago a Swedish one, but we are also looking into having a full Swedish academy team. Okay. Uh, early twenty four. Hope we can figure that out as soon as possible. But that'd be really cool. Then it's of course all about finding another way to kind of give back to Sweden and help Sweden even more to 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 get up there. Okay, so that's kind of like taking these I guess really young talents, really giving young them talents, your exactly. infrastructure I guess, and then kind of helping it, them on the. Very, very complicated road of <laughs> professional exactly, CS2, right. I guess. Trying to really catch them early and okay. also get them an easy route uh, in that career. Okay. Uh, goals for the next major. Are you thinking placement? Is it just having some good performances? What do you feel is a successful major? I guess winning it, yes, but yeah, if you're going to be thing, realistic. Like we, we all want to win. Like if you work in this in this side of e of uh, esports and NIP, you want to win, right? Mm. Uh, but of course, if we set the goals, it's not going to be let's win the major because yeah. that's not really helpful. It's going to be way more. Now I'm just kind of guessing and taking for what I think trolls would answer the director of performance. Mm. But it's going to be way more about how do we approach the major. You know, what level of ready are we when we get there? Okay. How how you know how good can we compete when we are actually there? And if you do that right, that should lead to you going to playoffs. If you're in playoffs, everything is possible. Mm. And then suddenly, there you go. I mean, it's CS2, literally, like you said, anything, anything, could, anything can happen, could right? Happen, I think yeah. this major, anyone can win. Like, yeah. anyone can win. Uh, people are happy regarding the Joka, Max, or in Silence one. So it's going to be a Swedish flag on the uh, on the Young Ninjas. Three uh, Swedes? Yeah. Not a Swedish Sh roster, like you said, but I guess three Swedes. Joka isn't announced. Okay. Is this okay. bait? <laughs> no, actually. I'm confused. Chad is going crazy. I'm, I'm just relating what Chad is saying. All That's right. all I'm doing. That's all my right. job. I mean, Joka is someone we talk to. I can say that much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Chat is going crazy. I, I like that though. That means there's interest. That means there's. I mean, people and care. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Super, and an important cool. part is that again, not promising any else will always be Swedish. It's it's being international. It's literally being the best talent we can find. Yeah. If that are three sweets, four sweets, five sweets, great. Also important point. If we stand between or Bjorn or you know so on, stand between choosing between two players like an Oprah, let's say, right, and one is Swedish and one is international, mm. then of course we go for the Swedish. They are equally yeah. like level, right? We would love to help Sweden when we can. I think people are going to love to hear that. So it's still a, uh, it's still a. Uh, it, it, it favors the Swedes, I yeah. guess, like you say. Yeah. Okay. Before we head into the actual giveaway with the mystery box, I actually have, like I said, hardest question for the end. Why should a Swedish CE supporter follow Ninjas in Pajamas? Yeah, th this question to me, as a NIP fan, like Eric the NIP fan, mm. is really easy uh, in that sense. Because NIP is created in Sweden. It's uh, operating in Sweden right now. It's right now run by Swedes and esports department, you know, Bjorn and I and a lot of other great people. It is the Swedish flagship out there. And we're trying to steer that towards bigger stages and trophies again. But just like you have the IKEA, like you have the ABBA, like you have the DICE Studios <laughs> yeah. made Battlefield, right? Yeah. You have all these companies that you're proud of as a Swede. That's what we want to have NIP being in the esports world. So NIP is not only a team, it should be their team, right? As Swedes. And that's what we're really trying to learn, you know fix now with getting closer to the Swedes and to the fan base that they feel like they are part of it and also the explanation we do so they feel like they understand why we're doing things. I'm not sure how to end anything after that. I mean, that's absolutely perfect. Thank you so much, Eric. And by the way, chat, I know it's a Q&A. You love that. But we have arrived. Uh, we've come to the part where one of you out there will now have the chance to win the, annou the announced mystery box. It's a Nintendo Switch. Red Bull Christmas Edition drink, signed Racer mouse pad, NIP t-shirt, and Racer keycaps. Lots of questions how you do it. All you have to do is type the word pyjama 
party in the Twitch chat. You got to do it right now. One word. Pajama party. Just Can make I sure do you cover. No? I, I think if you win, wouldn't that be uh, kind of weird? weird thing. Yeah, I won a couple of okay, my own giveaways, it. and it, it never looks You've good. You've won your own giveaways Maybe. multiple times. Maybe. <laughs> That's uh, a problem. You know what? I, I, I'm busy here, okay? Pajama <laughs> party in chat. One word. You're going to see chat going absolutely crazy with it. Pajama party to be able to win that. Nintendo Switch, by the way, Eric. That's yeah, that's what I want to win. That's, no. that's, that's kind of cool. It's Christmas around the corner. Do you ever do, you ever do any... Uh, have you ever done any console playing your own? I, I had two Switches. One I lost on a flight after like a East of One Birmingham. <laughs> like I, I put it on my uh, armrest, walked off the plane, came back, it was gone. Okay. So, yeah, I, I, Switch to me is hard to talk about. It's, it's, it's a tricky <laughs> one. It's I have some subject. feelings, yeah. <laughs> so while you guys in chat type the words pajama party for the mystery box, we actually have a small Christmas message from the ninjas themselves. Merry Christmas for everyone. And a happy new year. Thanks for all the support. And we are looking forward for 2024. Enjoy. <laughs> 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 Merry Christmas to you They're guys so as well. Cute. That's the cutest thing I've <laughs> yeah. ever seen. Head trick might, might be the nicest guy. I, I love know. him so much. Wonderful. Okay, I think we might actually already be, re be ready to announce the winner of the mystery box. Once again, a couple of seconds before we announce it. Nintendo Switch, Red Bull Christmas Edition drink, signed Razer mouse pad, NIP t-shirt, and the Razer keycaps. Hopefully, we are ready to announce the winner of that. And if I look super professional and do this, Eric, you ready? Whoa. I always feel super cool when I do this the winner of the oh, mystery box is <laughs> just waiting for it i'm waiting for it chad is apparently going absolutely insane suspension. i guess suspension i don't think we even have a win i think chad is still going off i guess that's why we haven't even announced it yet <laughs> okay so this is a name you ready <laughs> right. kask kask nabel was that even the pronunciation Kask Nabel 6000. I love <laughs> Twitch names name. so much. <laughs> Kask Nabel 6000. Huge congrats to you uh, for winning the, uh, the mystery box here from the NIP. And with that, Eric, again, I cannot thank you enough. I wish you a huge success for 2024. And I think the future is, is exciting. I really do. Are you looking forward to 2024 with NIP? Way too much. I can't <laughs> wait to get there, honestly. Merry Christmas, Eric, and I have a happy new year to you, and thank you so much for coming. Merry Christmas. Thank you. With that, everyone at home, that is actually the last pajama party of the year. Thank you so much for following us throughout the year. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for caring, and make sure you follow NIP on social media. We have lots to come in 2024. I can't wait for you to find out. Have a Merry Christmas and a happy new year. Bye. Thank you.